Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. I just now recorded the German version of this video and I felt kind of uncomfortable. I'm not used to speaking German in videos. It's, it's like my, my heart rate really rose to the ceiling. But never mind. Welcome on the second channel. This is Flamble Maths 2, all about basic mathematics, high school mathematics, blah, blah, blah. Maybe also um, early university level. But at first, we would like to talk about um, ranges of numbers. If, if you translate it like this, in, in German it's the Zahlenbereiche, okay, watch the German version if you are interested. So meaning we are going to talk about basically all the relevant sets of numbers that you are going to cover in school. Natural numbers, um, whole numbers, so the integers, real numbers, etc. So this is a basic introduction and for the rest of the series we are going to go um, deep into those numbers like um, all the main properties, ordering in the natural numbers, real numbers, etc. So yeah, stay tuned for that. This is just like some experimenting around um, series for now because I need to see if the concept works and, and if the setup works. We are going to dive right in. Welcome and yeah, let us go. So you may have heard about numbers, okay? They are pretty important. Numbers are really important and we would like to motivate the the sets of numbers that you are mostly using in your school life using algebra, a tiny little bit. So at first, they are the natural numbers. They are called natural numbers because they basically appear in nature. Someone said back then in, in the good old days that um, God created the natural numbers and all of the other numbers, numbers have been created by humans. So um, yeah, someone said that. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was just one of my university professors. We will never know. Okay, natural numbers. Um, they are basically the counting numbers. So um, I can have one apple, I, I can have two apples, I can have five apples, etc. So counting numbers are one, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 up until the biggest number, which doesn't exist because there are infinitely many natural numbers out there. There's really no good way of motivating natural numbers. So, so algebraically, it's just um, li like saying x is equal to 3. What's the solution to that? Really doesn't make too much sense. Okay, then, then x would be equal to 3. It's just what it is. It's an equivalence relation. But you can motivate it using a set of axioms. Set, uh, just a simple set of rules. Okay, S simple, simple set of rules that basically say something how the uh, about how the natural numbers basically um, behave and then using those set of rules you can basically go upwards. You can make more and more numbers like the real numbers, rational numbers, etc. But for now we are just going to take the natural numbers for granted. They are like I said before the counting numbers. Okay and we are going to denote the natural numbers by this blackboard bold font that we are having here. It's in latex language, okay, it's just a symbol. We are going to denote them like this. Also, what we have here, those curly brackets just indicate that we are having a collection of uh, symbols, basically. It's, it's called a set, it's, it's just a collection of elements. And those elements, natural numbers, are one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. Okay, many, 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 many natural numbers out there. Now we are going to continue and we are going to ask ourselves the question, well, how can we extend this? And it actually took a lot of years, a few hundred years, for people to extend this system here to something meaningful. And the first thing that probably comes to your mind, what the lowest number here could be, so the lowest positive number, would be the symbol for zero. Zero can be motivated by an algebraic equation yet again. We could say, well, what were to happen if we want to solve this equation? x plus 3, for example, is equal to 3. Well, people back then didn't think this was easy. This didn't make any sense to the people back then because, well, there was no symbol for what we need here. This thing is called zero because if you have three apples and I don't give you any other apple, okay, then you are still going to have three apples. Oh. I just love analytic apple theory. Apple theory is the best, okay? We are using apples here. If you have any concerns, we can also make oranges out of it or, or pineapples, I really don't give a shit. So x plus three is going to equal to three if x is equal to zero. We are going to extend the set right here, the natural numbers to the natural numbers with zero. They don't really have any fancy symbol coming with it. It's just n with an index of zero down here, okay? It's just what it is. And this is the set of zero, 
one, two, blah, blah, blah. Up until many, many other numbers coming after that. This is n with zero. This is like a little bit of a bigger set. We shouldn't say bigger here, okay? If you say something like this to a mathematician, they are going to go berserk, okay? Um, but let's just say for now that there's one more element in here, okay? And, and we are going to give it the name zero. Now, one other question one might, might ask is, well, how can we get rid of free apples? Okay, for, for example, what can we do to get rid of free apples? I mean, x plus three is equal to this fancy zero that we have just introduced. Now, this also took a lot of time for people to, to really accept that there are numbers that satisfy this. Okay, I, I think zero actually came after um, getting those numbers, which are called the integers, the positive and negative integers. In, in other regions, they are called the whole numbers. It, it really depends on where you live. But we are going to postulate that there are numbers that satisfy this equation. And here's a simple motivation. Well, I can take your free apples away and then you don't have any apples left. Okay? We are going to call those numbers negative numbers and there's a whole lot of them. Okay? So set okay, for um, set ju just because the word integer starts with a z, okay, z whatsoever. Um, <laughs> I think it comes from something German, okay, this set, but, but I'm not um, certain about that. We are going to define this set, z, as the following thing. There are many, many numbers here. Then we are going to have negative 2, negative 1, and then 0, and then all of the positive integers, which are called the natural numbers, okay? And motivating those is, is kind of weird. I mean, we can motivate them using this algebraic equation. You can put something different here, okay? But um, other than that, it really doesn't make any sense to you at, at first if you had three apples and then I'm going to take six apples away from you. I mean, then you don't really have any apples left, but you also don't have negative three apples, this is kind of weird. So, so motivating this with real life things is, is kind of hard. Most teachers motivate it with a debt, okay? You, you can have a debt of some sort, but um, other than that, just take it for granted. Those are the positive and negative integers being denoted by this fancy blackboard bold symbol yet again. We are going to go one step farther and we are going to ask ourselves the algebraic question. Well, um, how can we solve this one? Three times x is equal to one. Once again, kind of hard to do with apples because you need pieces of apples now here. I mean, three apples multiplied with what is going to give you one apple back? Kind of weird, okay? We're going to introduce the so-called rational numbers. They are going to be den denoted by Q. Q here, I think, is for quotient, but I'm not certain about the terminology, okay? Um, it's, it's just what it is, it's a Q. Maybe it's something German, some, some German thing yet again. We are going to denote the set by the set of numbers satisfying this property. They are of the form A over B. Those numbers are of the form A over B. But we need to apply some more rules to this, so, so some more background information is needed. You might have learned in school that dividing by zero gives us a, a few problems, doesn't make too much sense mathematically speaking at first. That's why we are needing limits later in the game, but, but we are not talking about this. So um, we don't want b to be equal to zero, otherwise we are going to get problems. Also a could be anything, a could be equal to zero. If, if, if a is equal to zero, then we are just going to get the element zero yet again. So a is just something out of the positive and negative integers, okay, one for example, or you, you could also have negative one if you want to get negative one third, and we need b to be element of the positive and negative integers, but with the restriction that b is not equal to zero. Otherwise, we are going to get into trouble, real trouble. Talking about real, this pun wasn't even intended. We are now going to go a step further and talk about the real numbers. The real numbers are the set of numbers that have all of them in there, but, but many more, way too many more. Real numbers are, are way bigger than, than what we have here. I mean, we have infinitely many of those, but real numbers are way more infinitely many 
of those. Okay, so, so there are way, way, way more numbers. This is why we can't really denote it with a set. I mean, you, you can, but it's going to get a bit messy. This is why we are just going to put some elements into the set notation just so that you get the hang of it. Okay, we're going to denote the real numbers by blackboard bold R. It's also a set yet again. And there could be anything in it. For example, one, two, three, zero, negative one, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we have um, dot, 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 negative one, zero, one, two. But we can also have stuff like um, one third in here, or maybe a negative three over two. This is not ordered, by the way, at the moment. I, I mean, one third is less than one, but this doesn't matter. You, you just need to get the hang of it. But we also have other numbers in here. Numbers that are still algebraic. We, we can get them out by satisfying a certain algebraic equation yet again. For example, um, x squared being equal to 2. I mean, we can take the square root now. Maybe you know this from school, but then you get square root of 2. This is an irrational number, meaning it has no terminating decimals. Okay, so, so the digits after the point really don't stop. It's, it's 1.41 blah blah blah. I really don't care. They never stop. They are not per periodic. Really doesn't stop. So we have this number for example, square root of 2. You also have negative square root of 2. It's in here. It's an irrational number. But there are other kinds of irrational numbers which are way more fancy. There are way more of those other irrational numbers out there than, than all the other numbers here. They are called transcendental numbers and, and they are kind of mysterious. We nearly do not know about any transcendental numbers even though there are so many out there. Many more than we can even imagine. One of those imaginary num um, I'm terribly sorry, one of those <laughs> transcendental numbers is for example pi. You know this, this is just like the circle boy. Okay, or tau, it's just two times pi. Or one other fancy boy, one other really fancy one is called E. Okay, E, that's, that's just the meme, maybe you know about the E meme. Okay, and there are many more, like I said. And they are all part of the real numbers. And this concludes talking about all the most important sets out there. Once you are a little bit high on mathematics, you are only going to work with the real numbers because, um, well, all the other ones are included in here too. Speaking about included, we would like to talk about the order of those. So, so um, you can basically put them all into a diagram and, and if you just have this diagram in mind, you already know about the order, which one is bigger basically, which one has more elements. We are going to start with the smallest one. We, we are going to denote this set by a little circle, okay? This is just for um, illustration purposes. This right here is a circle and those are natural numbers, okay? This is just something. This is just our collection of elements. This is the set of natural numbers. Now we could go further and think about, well, how in this picture could we implement n with zero, natural numbers with zero? Well, if you think about it, n with zero has one more element than n. I'm doing this be because all the pure mathematicians out there are going to be angry at me if I um, if, if I dump it down like this, but we have to do it. Okay, school mathematics. So, so you have to start somewhere. So, so you have to start with a little bit of intuition. So um, the zero isn't included in here. That means that our set has one more element. Okay, it's, it's a tiny bit bigger than our n. We are going to put it to the outside because all the elements from n are also included in n naught. This is why we put this circle on here. Those are actually called Venn diagrams and, and they are really helpful in the so-called set theory. This is just the theory surrounding those sets that we have here, abstract objects in mathematics. Now we can make this Venn diagram even bigger by taking a look at z. Well, if you think about it, n is completely included in the positive and negative integers. It's, it's all of that. But also n naught is included in the positive and negative integers, meaning z is a tiny bit bigger than our n naught, meaning we are going to put another circle around it, around all of this. I, I hope you can see where all of this comes from. It's, it's, it's pretty easy to grasp, actually. Now you might get what we are getting at. Q, is again, a bit bigger, has more elements, basically. So all 
of the above sets are included in here, but we also have stuff that isn't included in here. For example, one third isn't in here. Meaning, I'm not going to close the whole circle. Um, feel, feel free to close the whole circle at home. Q would be here our rational numbers. And the same spiel goes for the real numbers. Okay, once again, you can put the whole circle around all of this. This is just a Venn diagram, which basically tells you the order of those um, sets that we are going to have right here. And, these, uh, and, and those are the basic number regions, number ranges whatsoever, that you are going to use in school. And this concludes the first video. Next time we are going to take a deeper look at n and at and and not. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. A lot of speaking today. Record a lot of videos already today. And we are going to talk about all the rules in their addition, subtraction in the natural numbers. Does this even make sense? I mean, there, there are no negative numbers in here. We are going to see. But I hope you are going to stay tuned for that. And, and then we are going to do the same spiel with all the other number ranges. And maybe at the end we are going to make one big conclusive video with, with some exercises or some more abstract stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, recommend the channel. If you like, don't forget to check out the main channel. If you like this t-shirt, make sure to check out the official Papa Flemmy merch. Yes, people used to call me Papa Flemmy. They, they still call me Papa Flemmy actually on the main channel. Are they still going to call me Papa Flemmy here? I do think so. If you did enjoy this video, recommend it to your um, teacher, for example. Maybe he's going to put this in class and maybe he's going to find this kind of attractive. And, and then we are going to gain more viewers here. Now, until the next video, have a flamble day. Ciao.